Hi everybody, how are you doing? This is Amanda. I hope that you are all well. A warm welcome to all of my returning subscribers and if you are new and you've just stumbled upon this video and my work, a very warm welcome to you as well. So what we are going to be doing in this video is an unboxing of the new Christ Consciousness Self Mastery Oracle deck that I have created with Jane Delaford Taylor, who is the artist. We have collaborated before and the first deck that we produced together was the Archangel Metatron Self Mastery Oracle deck uh, that came out a few years ago and looks like this. Many of you have worked with this deck um, and the Christ Consciousness deck that we're going to be looking at today is along similar lines, although of course working with a slightly different energy. But we have the title Self Mastery for a reason, and that is because this deck, like the Metatron deck, is trying to help you to master your life, master your emotions, learn how to deal with all of the conflicting energies that we have in our world, and to live the best life possible. So, what, what we have in this deck is 55 original pieces of artwork which have been turned into a card or cards. There is also a 128 page book which I wrote and I'm going to take you through it. Okay, so settle down, grab yourself a cup of tea or a drink of your choice and I'm going to take you through what this deck is all about. Uh, but before we do that, I think I would just like to explain a few little bits about how it was birthed and why it was birthed. So, as I say, it was about three years in the making. I think that this was a deck that I was always probably destined to create and bring out. I have, as you will read in the book that comes with this, always had a connection and a relationship with Jesus. I grew up in a Christian household and even though I no longer go to church, I no longer class myself as a churchgoer, and I have indeed embraced many other uh, belief systems and energies, I always say that Jesus never left me. Um, and for me, Christ consciousness is about trying to walk the talk, live by the principles that he taught, but what we will learn via looking at this deck is that many of the tenets of Christ consciousness are, of course, in other religions, other belief systems, things such as forgiveness, non-judgment, compassion, humbleness, uh, loving our neighbour as ourself. It's not exclusive to Jesus's message, but he was absolutely one of the best templates that we've had over the last couple of thousand years who laid down and demonstrated what it was to live by these principles. So in this deck, we do have references to other faith systems, particularly Buddhism, Sikhism, and we have representation of other things as well, which I will come to and I'll show you. It's a deck that's designed to be non-denominational. And what I mean by that is it's open to anybody of any faith system, any belief system. You don't have to be somebody that's ever gone to church or you can be somebody that goes to church. It is not exclusively a Christian deck. It's meant to be for everybody because the energy of Christ consciousness is for everybody. So, that was sort of the background to the, I feel, the importance of it. I think where we are in the world right now, it's never been more needed. And I'm going to take you through the artwork. So, yeah, we basically have um, 55 cards in this. I would like to thank Jane Delaford Taylor, who is the artist, for working with me. Uh, and it's been, it was a wonderful process to do that with her, as it was with the Metatron deck. I'd also like to thank the publisher, Red Feather, um, who are part of the Schieffer group, publishing group. And, you know, they took me on, had faith in me and my work. And I'm just very grateful to them as well. Also, before we get to it, I'd like to say a big thank you to all of you that supported this work over the last few years. 
Uh, people that follow me regularly on social media know that I have been talking about this deck for a number of years. Uh, you walked the path with me in many ways when I might have got stuck on a particular concept, not known how to maybe go about talking about something or how to, uh, with Jane, illustrate something. She was obviously the artist, but we collaborated together in terms of the ideas that went into the paintings. And also just the support in terms of having bought the deck and also having bought the original paintings, because I would like to say at this juncture that not that there's anything wrong with decks created in different ways, but this is a deck that came from an artist with a brush and paint and it is original works. So the paintings that you may or may not be able to see behind me, uh, you can certainly see this main one of uh, Jesus, which is the front cover of the deck, uh, with the exception of that and about five others that I kept. Uh, they were all sold and uh, they've gone all over the world to all sorts of different places. I've also donated a couple of paintings to an addiction centre in USA and it brings me joy to think that they are hanging in uh, a clinic somewhere helping people. So without further ado, should we have a look at the deck itself and get into it? So we're using two cameras today so that you can actually see a little bit uh, clearer what we're looking at. The deck comes in this box, so if you look at the other camera now, and uh, it's a nice sturdy box, uh, and I would just like to read maybe the back of the box because it's got a pretty nice little summary here in terms of what this is about. Uh, it says, the deck is a unique look at how we can model Christ consciousness in our everyday lives. The question, what would Jesus do, reflects what Christ consciousness actually is. And it asks if we can model the behaviour, the energy and the higher love that he showed. Christ consciousness is a living energy within you, within me and many other belief systems. It's about unconditional love and higher consciousness that we can master and we can embody and that can elevate our world to unity. This deck was never intended to be a straight run through of Jesus's life. Um, instead, what we've done is pulled out some of the most significant stories or that we felt would be helpful to you to be focusing in on. And also there are depictions within the deck of some of the main players in the story, not just Jesus himself. And in particular, we have cards representing Mother Mary, Joseph, Mary Magdalene, Joseph of Amarathea, Thomas, Peter and Judas. So this is the deck. You open it up like that and um, just check my upper camera. Uh, you'll see here there is a depiction of the Holy Spirit, uh, which is one of the cards in the deck. The book itself is uh, a good size, very good size. Uh, as I said, it's 128 pages long. There's a little bit there about me, about Jane. Uh, there is pi coloured pictures, very beautifully reproduced, of every single card uh, with the title, the number, and then also the channeled message that came through for each of the messages which I wrote. It was an interesting experience for me as a writer because I wrongly thought that maybe I was going to sit down and just channel through the 55 messages like that. <laughs> and it didn't quite work like that because the Christ consciousness energy is a living energy that asks you to be and do. So when it came, for example, to be writing about any of these 55 concepts, I had to sit with what it was. Maybe I was given examples in my own life or in the collective, which were spot on with what I was writing about. Uh, so it was very much a living, breathing thing where I had to experience each of the 55 themes and concepts. And as you work through the deck, I suspect that's what will happen with you as well. So, yeah, this is the book. And as you can see, beautiful um, pictures of the cards. I'll take you through all of the cards in a moment. But as you can see, there's quite a lot of writing for each of the cards. And... 
I think they've done a really nice job. At the start of the book as well, we have some information in terms of suggested spreads that you could do. So, for example, if you're wanting to maybe just focus on a particular card of the day, card of the month, a card to show you where you are in a particular year, what you might need to be working in on, however regularly you're wanting to dip in, um, then a single card spread is very useful. There's also guidance if you wanted to go more in depth from time to time, uh, what I've called an in-depth soul guidance spread. And in that we look, for example, at uh, a card for your gifts and your blessings, which could be hidden, a card which is to do with past influences and issues, a card with regards to current life lesson, a card for current blocks and challenges, a card for guidance for your next steps, a card for future energies, and then a final seventh card, which is a message from Jesus. Uh, I also take you through what to do in terms of preparing the cards, uh, opening the cards. Uh, I will say very much like with the Metatron deck, we put thought into what should be the back of each card. So in the Metatron deck, there is an illustration of a Merkabah, which keeps the deck high vibrational. And in the Christ deck, what we did was we have taken the painting, which is to do with grace, and that is the back of every single card. And it shows the nectar, the honey. And I just feel that that keeps every single card um, beautifully protected in that grace energy. So yes, information about preparing the cards, working with the deck, and then I've also shared a little bit of my story uh, towards Christ consciousness, where I am now with it. And um, yeah, it's all there for you. So that's the book. So let's put that to one side now and let's have a look at the cards themselves. So as I say, they come in this box I'll we'll just lift them out and let's look at them in detail one by one. OK, so are you ready for the 55? <laughs> Let's start at the very beginning. Let's start with card number one, which is here. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to zoom my camera in, which I've got up here, to make sure that you can see it as well as you possibly can. Okay, I think that's as good as we're going to get. So card number one is Jesus, follow my lead. The painting behind me on the wall there uh, has a boat uh, and the Sea of Galilee depicted. I love the colour palette that we've got going on here. I have to say that turquoise is probably one of my favourite colours anyway, but we've got very soft turquoise, teals, golds, oranges. I just think it's a very, very beautiful image. And it shows Jesus with his arm outstretched, his hand outstretched, um, welcoming you. Uh, to walk with him uh, and to follow his lead. So that's card number one. Card number two is the energy of sisterhood. And we have the depiction of Mary Magdalene and Mother Mary together. So around a campfire, we also have a representation of something such as the Milky Way in the sky. And it's to do with sisterhood and the feminine way. We're living in a time where the divine feminine is rising across our world and these strong archetypal energies of the two Marys are absolutely there to guide us and also encourage women to work together for the greater good as well. Remember also that if you're a man, you have the divine feminine energy within you as well. So card number three is the energy of wisdom and it's wisdom bringer, shows a little baby it's a nod to the fact to remind you that you are a divine being of light who came in with great wisdom, great knowledge from previous lifetimes, um, but also that we are all, whatever age we are, really still a babe in terms of what we know. Uh, there is more that we don't know than what we do know. So it's the journey of continual discovery and remembering to be childlike as much as we can as well in terms of our innocence and our purity when we go about unlocking new doors of discovery. Card number four is the energy of Joseph, father of Jesus. 
uh, had so many beautiful synchronicities when I was writing the words for the Joseph card, um, particularly around the theme of carpentry and wood, um, going down to the park, seeing beautiful structures that had been made, wooden structures for the children to play in on the day that I was writing about Joseph. And here we've got a depiction of him helping Jesus to climb the tree. And this card is about fathering and responsibility. Card number five. This was actually the first painting that Jane did for the whole deck. So it holds a very special place in my heart. And it is of the Magi. So the Magi, the three wise men who obviously followed the star at the birth of Jesus. And this is to do with signs and divine timing. The colours in that one is, are really exquisite as well. Card number six is Thomas, one of the disciples who obviously had a moment of doubt. We've also called this card, as well as doubt, mind trap. We can all get trapped in our mind where we maybe are in ego or in fear. And the Thomas card is about realising that we can transcend our doubt. And uh, Thomas is a, a wonderful teacher energy in this deck. Card number seven is another disciple energy. This is the energy of Peter and denial and weakness. We all have moments where we deny, where we're weak, where we want to turn away. We don't want to look. We don't want to acknowledge maybe our own light within ourself, our own, op our own um, ability to live our best life. And of course, the story of Peter is, again, he was able to transcend this moment of denial and go on to become the rock, you know, the, one of the founders of the early church. So he had a huge mission, but with huge mission, often we can have considerable doubt and anxiety along the way. So the energy of denial is there with Peter. Card number eight is the energy of the Holy Spirit, and it says, work through me. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. I'll just zoom in a little bit closer with this card. There we go, a little bit. That's a little bit better. Um, Holy Spirit, work through me. We have the dove. Card number nine is the first representation of two in the deck with Jesus and Mary Magdalene together. And this card is shared mission. So here we have the energy of Mary and Joseph coming together in that incarnation to teach, to lead. And of course, Mary is uh, one of the most important disciples. Uh, and there's a lot that is not uh, written about her or her, she's been written out in many places within the Gospels. But her time is coming and she absolutely was there with Jesus helping to get the message out. But also the energy of union, the fact that this card is saying that we often need um, to share our mission with others. Uh, teamwork is important. Card number 10 is the energy of the garden. It says receive and heal. And you could view this card in many different ways. It could link you back to something like the Garden of Eden, a time of innocence and purity. Um, or you might, it, it doesn't really matter how you view it. It's more that this is a card which signifies healing and rest and the need for renewal. Card number 11 is the energy of Judas. Very, very important. Without Judas, there would have been no crucifixion. Without Judas, there would have been no resurrection. So take that into your life in terms of the people that might come in to betray you, um, do the dirty on you in some way, but actually it's how you often grow. So it's through adversity that we can become the diamond light that we are a very easy life with nothing that ever rocks our boat. Sometimes we don't grow to our full potential. So Judas is here to remind us that some people are catalysts in our life, but also it's the energy of soul contract. In this card, he's here clutching his bag of silver. There's a representation of the three uh, crosses in the background on the hill, and he's deep in thought and reflection, maybe regret as well, because often the person that comes in as the catalyst is a very hard soul mission. I have talked about this on my channel, and there are videos, particularly in my duality playlist, if you'd like to investigate, one called Multidimensional Soul Adventures, talks about the role of people such as Judas in our life. 
card number 12 is temptation and we chose to have the three monkeys represented um, see no evil hear no evil speak no evil imagine what would happen if um, we didn't for example pass on gossip or slander um, we didn't look at the car crash in front of us. I'm talking there metaphorically, um, being a spectator to other people's misfortune. I call it the gallows humour, uh, the gallows energy. It's uh, something that seems to be with us still from past lives where we can't help but look at other people's misfortune, other people's fall from grace. Whereas actually what Christ consciousness teaches us is just to carry on working on ourselves and our own light and to help others rather than glorify in the bringing down of others and um, all of that. So temptation, and this card is called moral compass, reminding us that we all have one. And I would like to say at this juncture that it feels very strongly that it's as though the world has lost its moral compass at this time. So again, Christ consciousness is about bringing it back to us, that we have to model that. Card number 13 is the energy of forgiveness. It shows two strangers uh, meeting over a barbed wire fence. They are able to um, breach the difference between themselves these people might have been enemies, it might be linked into an energy of war, or it might not, but it's the energy of forgiveness sets you free. Again, take that into your own life. Who is it that you have the most problem with, the most trouble with? Forgiveness is about setting you free. Card number 14, as I say, this is the one on the back of all of the decks, grace, blessings and goodwill. The B, of course, a very early symbol of Christianity. Card number 15 is the heart and it, I love this one, it says, what would love do? I think so often if we can bring it back to that in our life, what would love do? How would love behave? How would love speak? How would love act? We have the answer to how we should be being and doing in any one moment. And this card also has the representation of the golden chalice. Card number 16 is based on uh, those without sin, throw the, first, throw the first stone. It shows a vulnerable woman here crouching in fear, in terror. There's a man here about to throw a stone at her. And there is just this depiction, this very faint outline on the card of a golden angel wing. Somebody who's just trying to stop them from doing that, reminding them that as I say, those without sin cast the first stone. All of us have something we're not proud of in our lives, something we've said, something we've done. And uh, this card is about reflection and also where we project onto other people. So reflection and projection. Card number 17 is the energy of love thy neighbour. And it's reminding us that Christ consciousness is about being of service whether that is to the homeless, whether it's to somebody in your street, somebody in your family, somebody in your community, somebody the other side of the world. Love thy neighbour, being of service is card number 17. Card number 18 is one of the first references to other faith systems in this deck. And this shows a langar, uh, part of Sikh, the Sikh faith, Sikhism. And it's to do with fellowship, sharing and coming together. And here we have a meal that has been prepared by others for others, given freely from the heart with no expectation other than just the joy of being in fellowship, coming together and sharing. Very beautiful painting, that one. Number 19, another reference to other belief systems, uh, a nod to Buddhism here with the Buddhist boy in his orange robe. And uh, this is the card of prayer. Uh, it says contemplation and connection. And I asked Jane when she was painting this card to make sure that she also, or asked her to, to put into it a backdrop of modern life. So we, hit, we have here the city landscape, a busy town, skyscrapers in the background, two planes going overhead, implying that there might be a, quite a lot of noise, quite a lot of bustle. But within that noise, chaos, bustle, busyness, 
you are able to have a moment of prayer anywhere to contemplate and to connect to the divine. Card number 20 is the Ank. I have done uh, videos on the Ank. Uh, they are in uh, a playlist which I will put below in this video, linked into uh, Christ Consciousness. And this is the key to life, card number 20. Card number 21 is one of my favourites in the deck. And it's also one of the most challenging cards. It is um, acknowledging the moment at Gethsemane where Jesus had his darkest hour and he said, take this cup away from me. The moment of human doubt in terms of can I go through with what I know I need to do. So it's darkest hour and it's also when strength arrives. We have, I don't know whether the camera can pick it up, but there is a sword lying here beside the tree, um, implying that you are will be able to pick it up and with love be able to deal with what is in front of you. So Gethsemane, darkest hour, strength arrives. Card number 22 is also one of my favourites, just because it's a personal thing. This is painting was based on one of my photographs that I took at St. Michael's Mount in Cornwall, a very sacred, holy place, very beautiful. If you've never been, I would encourage you to go. And you can climb up what is called the Pilgrim Steps uh, to the place of worship at the top of the mount. And they are, as this painting implies, higgledy-piggledy all over the place, um, worn down by the number of people that have walked up them. There is also something called the Giant's Heart, at some point on the pilgrimage steps. It's a heart-shaped stone. But yes, this card is about onward steps. Keep going with regards to your path and your journey. Card number 23 is the card of relieving suffering, and it says move beyond pain. We obviously had to have the cross represented in this deck, and it is an, an important part, of course, of the story of Christ. Whether you believe he died on the cross, whether you believe he didn't, it's still an important symbol. For me, I have for many years moved away from the overt suffering, blood, gore, gothic nature of the cross that sometimes seems to be celebrated and instead remembering the cross for what it was, which yes, was a moment of suffering, but was also about being able to transcend that suffering. So here we have, for example, the poppies representing that. The red poppies to do with sacrifice, the white poppies to do with peace, both in the same field together, the white shroud upon the cross, the flower garland on the cross, and the purple clouds representing transmutation, a reminder that whatever is going on in your life, that you can transcend and move beyond your pain. Card number 24 is the energy of miracles, and it says manifest and believe. This card is based on the feeding of the 5,000. Card number 25 is new vintage, be open-minded. It is the passage within the te New Testament which talks about you can't put new wine into old skins, old wine skins. So we did sort of an about take on that for this card. And what it shows is an old woman with an old skin, but actually because she is open-minded, she is able to drink the new wine. And of course, the new wine represents new consciousness, new ideas, new energy. So she's got such a kind face on that card. I must admit, this is one of the paintings that I did keep. It hangs in my hallway. Card 26 is purity. Not much to say about this card. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's very beautiful. It just shows an innocent child holding a lamb, and it says, return to innocence. I hear that beautiful song by Enigma as I say that. Enigma, return to innocence. Do listen to that if you don't know that song. Card 27 is unity, coexistence and tolerance. This is where our planet is heading. We just don't know the timeline. Ultimately, we will become a planet of unity, and it shows our beautiful Earth surrounded by uh, the rainbow light with all of the uh, refractions of white light from that, where we are able to coexist with each other in peace and in tolerance. That does not mean we become some homogenous, uh, one-size-fits-all group. 
it talks about tolerance, which means that we can sit with our brothers, with our sisters of different belief systems, different faiths, different creeds, different upbringings and get on. So that's the card of unity, card number 27. Card number 28 is the card of faith. It says, find holiness within. This is the passage where the woman in the crowd who had been hemorrhaging very badly for a long time uh, touched Jesus's cloak as he walked through the cr crowd. He instantly knew that some of his energy had left him to heal her and he turned round and he very softly rebuked her, reminding her that actually it was her faith that healed her. Uh, so this is about find holiness within. Have faith. Card number 29 is the only one in the deck which is uh, landscape and this is because we needed to get quite a lot into this card. We have the depiction of the, the Vesica Pisces here, this sacred geometric energy and shape in the middle, um, two circles birthing the third portal and we have the energy of Jesus and Mary Magdalene and it's acknowledging their sacred union. Um, this can also be a representation of the sacred union that we have within ourself, where our divine masculine and our, our divine feminine are balanced and whole and healthy and healed. So Holy Grail, sacred union is card number 29. There are some nods to numerology within this deck as well. So this one, 29, obviously adds to 11, which is a master number. I don't think I actually mentioned that Card 22 is pilgrimage. Yes, that felt important to honour that with a master number energy. And number 11, I deliberately put Judas at number 11 because, yes, without the people that uh, create sometimes the problems and the challenges in our life, um, we don't always grow as, as far as we can. So it's an uncomfortable pill that to swallow, but I do believe that's the truth. OK, we're halfway through. Let's more than halfway through. Now let's get to card number 30. Card number 30 is the energy of gratitude. So important to have gratitude. It's supposed to be one of the ways that you can uh, raise your vibration the fastest to get into gratitude. Whoever you are, whatever you have got going on in your life, you have something to be grateful for. And when we look around our world, sometimes the people who are the poorest in terms of where they're living, the circumstances they are born into, you see the children playing with just a simple football or something and they have joy, they have gratitude. I think sometimes when we have too much, we can forget that. So here we have the energy of gratitude, appreciation and thanks. And in particular, remembering that the greatest gift can often also be the people in our life. Card number 31 is stand up, steadfast vision. This is a reminder that Jesus was a revolutionary. Jesus was somebody who stood up for those who were repressed. Jesus absolutely challenged the status quo and the leaders of his day. And here we have a representation of a crowd joined together, holding candles of light, standing up for something which is important. So a uh, very powerful card, that one. Card 32 is the open door, Christ within you. This is a reminder that the open door, your heart, is always there. The Christ light is within there, but also to keep it open at all times for new experiences, new energies to come in. And also that you can grow in your Christ consciousness in terms of being able to practice it via the people that you meet. And this can come in via very unexpected ways. The people that come in through the door, the people that you meet in your life, that you, you can serve in some way, or that you can, uh, for example, you might be challenged to stay in a state of humbleness or a state of uh, love when triggered, but they actually are the doorway through which you can hone your ability to become a master of your craft. You know, this is called a self-mastery deck for a reason. And it's a lifetime's work. Card number 33, another um, master number. This is the card of the teacher. Just a nod to the fact, of course, Jesus is one of the greatest teachers to lay down this template and demonstrate it. He never faltered. And it says, walk the talk, walk the talk. Card number 34, humbleness, honesty and humility. When Jesus washed the feet of 
the, his disciples. This would not have been something that would have been expected or have been done during his age. But he demonstrated in that moment that he did not feel that he was above anybody else. Uh, so modesty and humility. The next two cards, 35 and 36, I always sort of put together. This is also a nod to the fact they were sold together. I uh, Well, they weren't actually sold. I donated these two to an addiction clinic in America, and I felt that they needed to go as a pair. So card number 36, if we start with that, is tethered and caged break free. It's a representation of that lower, some would call devil energy, that can get into us, get to grips with us from time to time, where we become addicted to something, we're shackled, we're tethered, we're caged, whether we're doing it to ourselves, whether it's being done to us. But this card implies and, uh, and reminds you that you can always break free from that. There is a key here beside the man who is shackled and chained. There is light coming through the door. So we can free ourselves from the cage that we put ourselves into. And also a reminder that light is always darker. Uh, sorry, <laughs> light is always stronger than darkness. Let me repeat that. Light is always stronger than darkness. Let me repeat that. Light is always stronger than darkness. Uh, the card of enlightenment, the one that comes before, just feels as though when we're able to have broken free from any grip that darkness has over us, we're able to step more into our continued growth. So this is the card of enlightenment, which is not one moment in time. It is a constant journey that is required of us to continue to grow. So those two always feel to me as though they go together. Card number 37, we have another um, person here, archetypal energy. We have Joseph of Amarathea. This is to do with being a trailblazer and an innovator, asking you to be that as well. If you don't know the story of Joseph of Amarathea, he was said to be Jesus's uncle. He traveled to uh, England. He helped form the early church here. He planted the holy staff, which became the tree. There is a nod to Avalon in the background. So there we have Joseph of Amarathea, and it's to do with what seeds are you planting. Card number 38 is the card of freedom. Just be you. Just be you. Imagine how free you can feel if you are just yourself. Card number 39 is the card of spiritual protection. I talk about this an awful lot on my channel. The armour of God is one of the things that I always put on every morning myself. And... The representation of it is here, card number 39, the armour of God. Card number 40, living from the heart, it says soften and open. The lotus flower representing the heart energy to keep the heart soft, to keep the heart open and to live from the heart. Card number 41 is faith over fear. You can cope. At the story of Jesus who fell asleep, the storm whipped up. On the sea, the disciples got frightened, they woke him up, and he again gently rebuked them, reminding them that they should have had more faith over their fear, um, and that you can cope in situations where you think you can't. Card 42 was based on a refugee fleeing a, a war zone or a country that is in turmoil, in trouble. It shows a woman cradling her baby. And it's to do with gentleness. This is the card of gentleness and to respond softly. Beautiful colours in that. I love the palette. And indeed, the palette is quite similar in card 43, the purples. But this is the card of discernment. And it's to do with truth and clarity. Um, Christ consciousness asks us to be able to discern what is real, what is fake, what is true, what is false. Uh, also to not be afraid to look at what we need to look and that um, truth needs, the, the truth needs to come out at with. And then we've got the angel feather there saying that we'll be helped because some of the things that are being revealed in our world and will continue to be revealed in our world are uncomfortable truths. So spirit there helping us to see what we don't really want to see, but we have to acknowledge for the awakening and the ascension of this planet to fully birth itself. Card number 44 is Mother Mary. 
I asked Jane to paint Mary in a modern day setting and to paint her with a teapot. Now, yes, I'm English and we love our cups of tea, but also there's a nod here to the fact I think it's meant to be Turkish tea or peppermint tea. So she's just in a garden there and it's the card of mothering and nurture and the fact that Mary is always there for you if you need an, uh, somebody to listen to you, somebody to be there for you. Uh, maybe you have also this card could come out if you have problems with your own mother or you are a mother and you're having problems with um, parenting your child, for example. Card number 45, another one of the uh, disciples who became an apostle. This is Paul, who was Saul. So again, those of you that know the story, Saul, one of the main persecutors and prosecutors um, of early the early Christians, um, merciless actually in his pursuit of them, had this moment uh, on Damascus, revelation, transformation, awakening, where he realised he was wrong. So this is the card of awakening and transformation. It doesn't have to be as dramatic as it was for Saul, who became Paul, but it, it can happen in many different ways. Card number 46 is the lion heart card, our lion in the deck. The lion and the lamb, of course, being very synonymous with the energy of Jesus. Here, this is a reminder to stand firm, to be like the lion, to have courage. Card 47 is Night's Vigil. It says prepare and get ready. Uh, it's a nod to knights of old who would have had to had a period of reflection, contemplation, usually having to stay awake through the night to align to a higher truth, their God, the divine, thinking about their mission, what was to come, getting ready, basically. So this is a card of prepare and get ready. Card number 48 is spiritual practice. Um, it's a nod to structure and routine. Uh, however you do that, many different ways that you can build structure into your life in terms of a spiritual practice, but absolutely um, important. And this was actually based on a photograph that I took in my own room. So I've got that. I, that is my statue that I have there. These, of course, are my sprays that I sell. And uh, this is my crystal. So this is the crystal. Can you see that in the camera? <laughs> it's selenite. So that was there. OK, where are we up to? We're up to 49. 49 is peace, calm centre, calm mind, uh, based on the practice of stone balancing. But um, ultimately, it's about having peace and calmness within all parts of ourself. OK, we're into the last five cards, guys. Card number 50 is sacred sexuality, and it's to do with healing and connection. And here we have a teaching, really, about how far sometimes we've fallen as a society in terms of what we celebrate in terms of sexuality or not necessarily celebrate, but what is just out there and a return to sacred sexuality. So more written about that in the book. Card 51, the energy of abundance. Um, it says, what does it say? Enjoy life fully. That A reminder that you're here to enjoy your life. And it's made up of the simple things sometimes. A simple meal. We've got cheese and fruit here and uh, bread and the hammock also implying rest important so getting the balance right card number 52 is song really needed to have within this deck a representation of music and song uh, i grew up as i say within a christian church upbringing and i remember the hymns the psalms the parts of the communion service, which I found very, very beautiful, still do. I still love Christmas carols, Easter hymns, all of that. Uh, used to sing in the church choir. But again, Christ consciousness doesn't have to be about hymns and psalms. It can just be about simple expressions of joy, of making music. Here we've got um, the, the drum being beaten. Um, so we have song and it says celebrate and express yourself. Card number 53 is a representation of, this was actually taken from a photograph that was publicised in the media a few years ago. 
and it shows a tree that had been felled to make way for a new road in the United Kingdom. And this was a protester who was sitting in, literally like this, sitting in the cut down trunk. It was a very old tree that had been felled and they were distraught, they were crying and somebody just captured the moment. And I thought that was a really good representation of holy anger. And it's asking us to be the change. There are times when we see injustices in the world and we have to speak up, we have to stand up, we have to show that we care. Okay, so the card of holy anger. The last two cards, cards number, card number 54 is children. It says cherish and enter their world. Um, how many times do we maybe not do that to not see life through a child's eyes? So here we've just got the simple joy of a child at the beach enjoying their day. And it's a nod to children. Cherish and enter their world. And then the last card is resurrection, card number 55. Um, it says embrace new life. And we decided to depict this with uh, the forest, uh, a very densely packed forest of trees with the light coming through. So embrace new life. So those are the 55 cards. Um, what I will do now is I'll just shuffle them and show you how they shuffle. Sorry, I just put my hands there on this. They shuffle really well. Uh, there was a conscious decision made with this deck to not put gilding on the side. Uh, a few different reasons, but the main one was environmental. Uh, the Metatron deck that I created a few years ago does have gilding, but you know things move on and um, a lot of publishers now are not wanting to gild decks for environmental reasons. There is a process that has to happen for a deck to be gilded. Uh, one of you did mention that, you know, if it's something you really love, you can actually gild them yourself or, um, you know, sometimes people colour in with, I don't know, silver pen, gold pen. But for me, I don't know, I just felt as though a deck dedicated to Christ consciousness, it feels as though there is a, a humbleness here with, with the Christ energy. If you think about the way that G Jesus used to dress, for example, the way that he's depicted, a simple man um, sandals or barefoot, a simple tunic, uh, no, you know, adornment or jewellery or it just felt, it feels much more in keeping for me with the Christ energy um, for it to be more simple. So the, there were a few different reasons why we didn't. And also it, it shuffles beautifully without it as well. So we've got a matte finish on these cards and yeah, they just shuffle really, really well. Let's just see what that one is. Look at that. So that's the one that's come out for us watching this video today. And it's the energy of the heart. What would love do? What would love do? That's a question that I'm going to leave you with. So anything else to say then with regards to this deck? I think I've probably covered what I needed to cover. Um, in terms of where to buy it, it's obviously available in all bookshops around the world. Please do support your local bookshops. They're very important. I'm a big champion of bookshops, whether they be big chains or small little independent shops. Um, I will put the ISBN number uh, in the details of this video so that you can um, quote that if you want to, if you have got a little independent shop that could get it. But also, of course, we've got uh, at the likes of Amazon, one thing I would say, if you buy from Amazon, please could you write us a review? It helps to get the deck more widely known. Please also make sure that you're buying it from Amazon within your country, um, because obviously it's country specific sites. I also do stock this deck myself, although my first 200 decks, which arrived last week, sold out in 24 hours. So I'm going to be receiving about another 600 hopefully by within a month or so. Um, but don't let that stop you buying this. If what I have shown you has interested you, um, just have a Google or tap into the search engine where you can find it in your particular country. Also, if you are in different countries around the world, um, it's fine for you to put in the comments below where you purchased yours from. Give them a shout out. You also can buy this if you're in America from the publisher themselves, which is uh, Red Feather. I'll put those details below. Um, but I just really appreciate everybody that has helped get this deck birthed and out there into our world. 
So that's it. Those are the 55 cards of the Christ Consciousness deck. Thank you very much for watching, um, sending you lots of love. And let's just all think about what would love do? What would love do? Thank you very much, everyone. Bye-bye for now. Bye.